previously on Bourbon Moth Woodworking. I decided that Craig needed a desk because his laptop was always falling on the ground and I was getting tired of having to buy him new ones. And when it wasn't falling on the ground, he was just always in my way. So after much deliberation, I got on SketchUp and I designed this desk and we started working on it. First thing I did was cut out some templates so I could get the shape of my legs right. I traced out the templates onto some solid stock of wood, I cut out those rough shapes, and it was looking pretty good. Then I took everything over to the router table, and using a pattern routing bit, I routed everything out until it was the perfect shape. And then I started laying out all my desk parts. Once I had all the parts laid out for the front frame of my desk, I glued them together with some dominoes, and then I glued up my top. And then after that I glued up a back frame section. With both of these frame sections done, it was starting to look somewhat like a desk, but we wanted to make it prettier, so I got out a roundover bit and I rounded over everything so that it looked more mid-century. Then using some dominoes, I glued my front section and my back section together with some cross brace pieces, and we had a frame for a desk. Then, because I didn't want to do it, I made Craig put finish, Rubio Monocoat, on the top and the desk base, and that's where we left off beautiful desk frame. Now to complete the project. Now as nice as the desk frame looked it was missing something. Drawers. Now these drawers are going to be a little unique because they're not actually built into the desk itself. They're going to be a floating separate drawer box that slides into these openings and is secured with a few screws. So we got to build some drawer box things, for lack of a better word. Now, I didn't want to just build some square boxes and shove them in there. I wanted them to have some shape, some roundness to match the desk. So I started with some thick six quarters solid black walnut and I will shape this into, you know, a round box rather than your traditional square box. Along with the six quarter black walnut, I also milled up some 13 16 black walnut that will be used for the top and the bottom of our box because I don't need those to be thick. That's why I use thinner wood. Because you shouldn't use thicker wood when you want something thin. You should use thin wood. Fact. Once I got a straight edge on all my boards, I took them over to the table saw and I ripped them down to the correct width. Now the plan is to glue up two big chunks, one of six quarter black walnut and one of the 13 sixteenths. They'll be long straight pieces that I can then dice up into my individual sides and tops and bottoms for my two separate drawer box units. So after cutting everything to width on the table saw, I went over to the planer and we ran everything through the planer on both sides to get the tops and bottoms nice and smooth. With two pieces of six quarter and two pieces of 13 sixteenths walnut, all I had to do now was spread some glue on that seam using my patented glue spreading device and then stick them in clamps. I'm not going to be using any biscuits or dominoes to hook this together because it's only two pieces and it shouldn't be that bad. I was able to get the seams pretty nice and even and the little bit of ridge that is there I'll just sand out later with the Rotex. After I got my two pieces of six quarter walnut glued up, now it was time to glue up my two pieces of 13 sixteenths. Now the width on this is only 14 inches, which means I don't have to be that careful gluing it together because after I'm done, I can just run it back through the planer and get rid of any unevenness that may have occurred. Once the glue was dry, I took all the clamps off and I had a little cleanup to do as far as the glue goes. So I got out a putty knife and I scraped off all the excess glue before I took it over to my planer. Once the glue was off, well, I mean, I already said it twice, I took it over to my planer. That part should have been pretty darn obvious. I mean, the lead up was a dead giveaway. Now unfortunately, I couldn't plane down the six quarter walnut because it was too wide for my planer. So after looking around and realizing that Craig was nowhere to be found, I had to sand this one myself. Luckily, the Rotex eats through those seams and makes it nice and smooth in no time. Now here's where I had a little bit of ADD which I do quite often in the shop. 
I started cutting up all the pieces because I fully intended to start working on the drawer boxes themselves. I immediately got distracted and decided that instead of doing that boring work, I thought it would be fun to design some new wood drawer pulls to go on the front of the drawers themselves. Now, I just kind of made these up as I went along, so I'm gonna try and lay it out for you exactly as I did it. The first thing I did was rip down a strip of two inch wide by three quarter inch thick black walnut. Then I went over to my miter saw and I cut it up into 12 inch sections. Now I'm gonna need four individual drawer pulls. So I went ahead and cut up six sections because I didn't know what I was doing yet and I thought there'd be a really good chance I'd mess something up along the way and I wanted to have a few extras. Next, I took my two inch wide blanks and I marked the very center of each of them. So right at one inch and I drew a line right down the middle, dividing it in two. Then I measured over from the right hand corner four inches and I made a little mark. Now here's where you just gotta be creative. I needed a round radius profile, so I just grabbed the top to a jar of dowels I had laying around, and I used it to trace out a quarter circle, starting at that point four inches in from the edge and ending at that line right in the center. Now, because I'm gonna have drawer pulls on either side of the desk, some of them have to be facing one direction and some have to be facing the other direction. So for three of my six pieces, I marked them on one side, and for three, I marked on the opposite side. Same marks, opposite sides of the board. Then I went over to the bandsaw and I cut right along that center line, all the way to just where my line started to curve. And then I stopped because we're not gonna cut that curve yet. First, we're gonna cut straight lines on all of our pieces, and then we'll move the fence, and then we'll cut that curve. So, that's how I did it. After all my straight lines were cut, I cut the curve, but I didn't cut right to the line, because I was worried I wasn't gonna hit it exact. So I left a little meat on that bone, just on the other side of the line. And we'll come back and clean this up later with the oscillating belt sander. And by later, I mean, we're gonna do that right now because this is a YouTube video and I really don't see any sense in making you wait. So after I got all my curves cut, I went over to my oscillating belt sander and very carefully I sanded right up to the line and made sure the transition from my straight line to my curve was nice and flowy, like one continuous arc. Now, if you have no idea how in the world this is gonna become a drawer pull, well, don't worry, neither did I at this point. Like I said, I was making this up as I went along. Next, I went back over to my outfeed table and using my ruler, I marked three inches over this time from the left-hand side, and I made a little mark. Then I did the same thing on all of my pieces, reversing that measurement for the pieces that were going the opposite direction. So now we have three pieces going one way and three pieces going the other way and they're all cut out with a little straight section and a nice little curve. Next, I chalked up a one inch cove bit into my router table and I'm gonna use this to add a cove on the underside of that piece. This is where our fingers are gonna be able to catch and actually use it as a pull to pull the drawer out. Now, as you can see, this looks a little sketchy, but I promise it's not. You just wanna make sure that you're going with the grain and that you're just taking off a little bit at a time, working your way down to that final depth. This is also why I cut these things so long. They're 12 inches, I don't need 12 inches, but I wanted a little room on either side that I could hold on to so that my fingers would not be anywhere near that spinning router bit. Pretty soon I had a nice cove cut on the bottom. I went right up to that line that I marked over three inches, and then I stopped right at the apex of the curve on the other side. So those are my two guides to know where I needed to place that cove. Again, don't try and take off all the material with one pass. Start with little passes, like an eighth of an inch at a time, and work your way down to the final depth until that bearing is resting on your piece. If you take off too much at once, that's when things get a little scary. With the cove for our fingers cut, now it was time to start actually shaping the piece. So I set the table saw to 20 degrees and I ran all the pieces through, cutting off just the top corner of our handle above where we just coved. So it kind of looks something like that. 
After running all my pieces through at 20 degrees, I set the saw to 45 degrees and I ran them through again. What we're doing here is starting to get a nice round-ish shape on the top of our drawer pull. We'll refine this a little bit later on over again on the sander, but for now we're just removing material. Then I went over to the miter saw. I set my saw to 40 degrees and we're going to cut an angle ending right at the tip of that curve that we cut over on the bandsaw. Now this isn't a compound angle. I don't have the saw blade tilted on the opposite axis. I'm just cutting a straight down 40 degree right to the tip of that curve. So it looks something like this. Then I got a three quarter inch setup block. These are Rockler setup blocks. They're awesome because they're same dimension on all four sides. And I marked over three quarters of an inch from that line that we marked earlier, the one that was three inches in from the side. Once I've marked all my pieces over three quarters of an inch, I take them back over to the miter saw and I cut another 40 degree angle matching my previous one, this time on the opposite end. It's really funny when you film yourself making something up and then you go back and you voice it over as if you know what you're doing because in my head at this point, I'm just cutting angles and hoping it looks good. Anyways, now we've got matching angles on both sides and it's starting to take shape. Of course, you have to do opposite angles on your other three pieces that are going the other direction, but that's not too hard to figure out. Now, after I had all those angles cut, I decided that I wanted to start rounding these over a little bit, but I didn't want to do it all by hand, so I set the saw to 30 degrees, I believe, and I just cut a little bit off the top, leaving about a quarter of an inch on the bottom of straight grain cut from our initial 40 degree cut if that makes any sense at all. After I cut that angle on the little side, I switched the saw over and I cut that same angle on the bigger side. Again, just working our way slowly down to our final thickness. You don't wanna to take too much off at once. I didn't measure these, I just completely eyeballed it until I was close to a quarter of an inch at the bottom there. And it's starting to look kinda drawer pull esque I think. Pretty soon I had all six of my drawer pulls roughly shaped. As you can see, three facing one direction and three facing the other direction. Now you really could stop here if you wanted more of a flat faceted look for your drawer pull, but I wanted them to be a little more round to match the desk itself. So I went over to the sander and just by hand, I rocked the pieces back and forth across the sanding belt to knock down all the ridges that we created on the table saw and give everything a nice rounded over look. There's really no wrong way to do this. I mean, these are custom drawer pulls. Whatever shape you want is fine. Just keep sanding and shaping until it looks good to you because that's really all that matters. Unless, of course, you're building this for your wife. Then definitely double check with her before making any design decisions. Before long, I had all the ridges knocked down and everything was looking sexy and smooth and almost like I had known what I was doing from the very beginning. I just touched up all of my edges with a little hand sanding starting at 120 and working my way up to 180 and the shaping portion of making the drawer poles was done. Now to figure out a way to attach them to the drawer faces. I made this little jig with two holes in it that landed right on the big flat parts on the back side of the pole. Then I use this little automatic punch. Yes, it's available on my website for purchase. And I made a little mark right where I wanted to drill my holes on the back of the pole. Then leaving it in this Rockler wood screw clamp so that I'd have a nice steady surface, I very carefully drilled out a hole on either side of the pole, making sure not to go too deep and poke out the front of the pole and have to start all over again, which thankfully, I didn't, because I set the stop on my drill press. With our holes drilled out, all I had to do now was just add a drop of CA glue inside the hole, and then I cut some lengths of threaded rod. I chalked it up into a drill, and very carefully I used the drill to thread the rod into our hole and glue itself in place with that CA glue. Once I started to get resistance, which meant I was deep enough, I unshucked the threaded rod from the drill, and look at that. 
Now we have a way to install these onto the drawer faces. All we have to do is drill corresponding sized holes through our drawer face. We'll stick this drawer pole through the holes and we'll attach it from the back side with a few locking nuts. Phew, that took a while. I almost forgot what we were even working on. Oh yeah, desk. Dude, what the heck are you doing? I'm doing a little TikTok dance because I got these hats and I'm trying to do the TikTok thing and make people all want them. Why don't you just make a Squarespace website and then you can just send people there, they can find your products and you can do this on your own platform. But you see, sometimes I have to edit my videos to make myself look a little nicer. So I need a platform that I can do that on. Yeah, but Squarespace has the Video Studio app where you can make professional level videos right there in the app. Edit, post, all that stuff. You don't say. Yeah, but what if I wanna save my videos so people can see them for a long time? Like create a little gallery. I don't know why anyone would wanna see this again, but Squarespace does have a portfolio and gallery page so you can present your work in a professional manner, not like this, uh, by creating a nice looking portfolio of all your stuff. All right, but what if I don't wanna to go to the post office because I'm too busy dancing and I want people to come right to me to pick up their hats so I don't have to ship them. Well, through Squarespace, you don't have to just ship products. You can easily offer local pickup so people can come to you and you have more time to move around. Oh, that would be nice. Listen, just go to squarespace.com and start a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bourbonmoth woodworking and you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Guess I'll look into it. Anywho, with our drawer pulls done and out of the way, it was finally time for my ADD to be put aside and get back to work on the drawer boxes, the thing that we actually need to get done. So back over to that slab of six quarter walnut and I started cutting it into rough lengths. And I say rough lengths because I didn't trust the accuracy to get all of my pieces cut with the track saw. So I just cut them roughly to length and then I went over and I cut them exactly the right length on the table saw. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I didn't just want square boxes. I wanted them to be slightly round in shape so that it matched the rest of the desk. So I'm gonna round over all the corners of the box, but I want a big round over. Big enough that I didn't wanna start with that big of a round over. So first I hit it with a half inch round over and the little trim router, and then I chalked up this gigantic one inch round over over on my router table and I ran all my pieces through that. This is a big guy and it scares me a little bit, but look at that round over his nice curve. Ooh, I like that. So anyways, I did that to all the edges of the sides of my box. Pretty soon I had all my pieces cut and rounded over and it's gonna look a little something like this. Just wait for it, hold on. Fat Fingers McGee over here is trying to do stuff. One side, two sides, and three sides. Now you might be saying, doesn't a box have four sides? Well, yeah, but this is a box for drawers. So the drawers are gonna be the front side. So we gotta leave that open. Now, I didn't think I needed any biscuits or dominoes to glue this up because it's long grain to long grain. So as long as I could get some clamps on there and let it dry adequately, this thing should have no problem sticking together. So I just smeared glue on both of my edges. I wedged it between my rounded over side pieces and I hooked on a few clamps. Now, because there was no front to these boxes, when I started clamping the back, it kind of wanted to pinch that front together. 
So in order to keep this from happening and make sure that the box remained square, I cut these little brace pieces to wedge in the front while I had the back clamped and waited for the glue to dry. It worked pretty good. And in no time, I had both my separate drawer boxes, well, um, started at least. We still got a long ways to go before these puppies are done. So after waiting for my glue to dry, I removed the clamps and I started refining the curve of the box using the hand sander. Now you don't want to focus on one spot for too long with the hand sander or you'll get a flat spot. It's all about keeping the sander in constant motion and working your way around that curve, mimicking the shape, really bringing it to life. Ooh, ah, yeah. Once I had those all sanded, it was time to start figuring out my top and bottom. Using this 13 16 walnut we glued up earlier. So I set my drawer box component on top of my walnut slab and I used it to mark out the length that I would need for a top and bottom section. Once I had that marked out, I just used the track saw and I cut it a little bit longer than I actually needed it because that will make gluing it on the top and bottom so much easier. Once I had my pieces cut, I set my drawer box contraption on one of the bottom pieces and then I plopped on a top piece. Now you might be asking, how are you planning on hooking these to your side pieces? Well, I'm glad you asked because I wanted to disappoint you and tell you that I'll just be using the domino joiner. Now you might also be asking, isn't that gonna be a problem? You know, wood movement and all? And I don't think it will be. These pieces are small enough that they're really not gonna move that much. And I've actually done this exact same method when I built my whiskey coffee table over a year ago. And it still looks great. If you're interested in that video, you can click that thing right up there in the top right hand corner. So after marking all my pieces for the domino, I mortised out all my mortises and I wanted to do a test fit. So I inserted some dominoes. You can see they're very tiny, five millimeter dominoes, because you don't need much. This is really just to hold it in place and then we'll add a few dabs of glue as well. Once I got the top dry fit with dominoes, I was starting to, well, not love the way it was looking. It just was a little blah. And that's when I remembered when I built the whiskey coffee table, I added a shadow line between the top and the sides to kind of break up that transition. So I grabbed a rabbiting bit, I chalked it up in my trim router, and I added a eighth inch rabbit around the entire perimeter of the top and bottom of my drawer box units. Whenever I do small router detail like this, I always like to run the router in reverse because it makes a cleaner cut. It's technically called a climb cut and because you're pulling the router in the opposite direction of which it is cutting, it's less likely to cause chip out. And I really didn't want chip out after I did this much work to get to this point. So just pull it backwards and you'll be surprised how clean of a cut you get. After cutting my rabbit, I grabbed a little piece of scrap wood and set it on top so that you can see what I'm talking about when I say shadow line. So instead of the sides going right into the top, now it's broken up by an intentional line that is uniformed and it'll just create a nicer seam. But what wouldn't be nice is trying to get finish in that shadow line after everything's assembled. So before I glued the top and bottom on, I decided to pre-finish that shadow line with a little Rubio Monocoat. Next, it was time to insert my dominoes, this time with a little bit of glue, a tap, 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 a tap a ruski, speed it up so you don't have to wait so long, and we're ready to put on the top. Luckily, the top slid right on, no real hiccups there. And I flipped the whole thing over and did the exact same thing to the bottom. Or the top. I've lost track at this point. I guess it doesn't really matter, they're identical. Anyways, after getting both pieces hooked on both sides, I added some clamps. I probably didn't need the clamps, it was a pretty nice friction fit, but I figured, what the heck, might as well. And in no time, I had both of my drawer units glued up. 
Once the glue was dry, I removed all the clamps and it was time to shape our top and bottom pieces. I mean, you didn't think I was just going to leave those all squared off and ugly, did you? The nice thing about the round shape of our sides is that we can now use that shape as a router template to perfectly match our top. So I simply chalked up a quarter inch flush trim bit in my trim router and I just worked my way around the entire outside. I did have to put a little scrap piece in the front because there was nothing for the bearing on the trim router to land on, but that wasn't that big of a deal. Once I had that in place and clamped so that it couldn't pop out, I continued my routering and things were starting to look pretty clean. After I had everything flush trimmed, I put a 16 inch round over in my trim, wait, no, not 16 inch, a 16th inch round over. 16 inch would be huge. Anyways, I rounded over all the edges on the top and bottom. And then I finally found Craig. So this time I made him sand everything. While Craig sanded, I started working on the internal components meaning the drawer boxes and the drawer faces. I'm gonna be using Blum undermount drawer slides, so I just set them in place and I got my measurements for my drawer boxes. For the drawer faces, I just cut some simple rectangles of walnut, nothing too fancy. While I was sanding those down, Craig brought me ice cream. What a nice guy, he's always so considerate, bringing me stuff while I sand. I mean, say what you will about the guy, but every once in a while, he just does something really sweet. Anyways, back to work. After I cut and sanded down the drawer faces, I made some drawer boxes. Now, if I had more time, I would have liked to do something fancy to more match the desk, but I just did Baltic birch with walnut veneer bottoms. Craig, you're just gonna have to live with it. Speaking of Craig, he was hard at work putting Rubio on all the pieces that I just built. That was until he had to leave to go to his son's baseball game, and somehow I wound up alone in the shop late at night, finishing all the parts and pieces for his desk. And when I mean all the parts and pieces, I mean everything including drawer boxes, which are a royal pain to put finish on. So thanks a lot, Craig. But the next morning, Craig magically showed up for the fun part, assembling all the pieces together and finishing the desk. So first I wanted to add some feet to the bottom of each one of the legs. Now this step isn't necessary, but it does help avoid any chips that might be caused to the legs as you you know, scoot the desk around. So I like these little metal feet. You just nail them into the bottom. So after pre-drilling, I just add a dab of CA glue into that hole. I start my foot into the hole and tap it in place with a hammer. Now gravity is gonna hold it in place more than anything else, but the CA glue will ensure that it doesn't pop out. Once we had a nice stainless steel foot on the bottom of each one of the legs, it was finally time to install these pesky drawer boxes. Now believe it or not, this is the first time that I'm actually sliding them into place and part of me was a little concerned that they weren't gonna fit. But I was worried about nothing because they slid in perfectly. I guess that's what you get when you use a tape measure. At least, that's what you hopefully get like one out of every 20 times and this just happened to be my lucky time. Next, I used a half inch setup block to set the reveals on the front and the back of the desk and get the drawer boxes into the correct position. Now, I didn't wanna just screw the drawer boxes to the desk frame because I was a little concerned with wood movement. So I drilled a large hole, and when I say large, it was like a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths, but not huge, through the drawer box just to the desk frame. Then I drilled a pilot hole in the center of that larger hole, and then I inserted these cabinet head screws. Now the screws are much skinnier than the hole. So although they'll hold the drawer box tight to the desk frame, there's a little wiggle room around the shaft of the screw to allow for seasonal wood movement. I did this at the front, I did this at the back, 
and I did this at the top. And just like that, our floating drawer box things are installed. So me and Craig carried the whole desk frame and drawer units up onto the loft of our office where his desk will permanently reside. Then Craig carried in the desktop and plopped it in place. Hey, I just realized why they call those computers desktops. Because they sit on your desktop. Huh. Never thought about that before. Anyways, after measuring to get my overhang all even around all four sides, it was time to install the top to the base. For that, I'm just using these Z-clip fasteners that you've probably seen me use a hundred times before in other videos. After getting the top screwed on, it was time to install our drawer slides. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you have seen me install these countless times before. You screw them to the side and make sure they're all spaced and even and level, all that jazz. If you really want to know, there's a link up there in the corner to a video and I show you exactly how to install. After I got the slides in place, I slid in my drawer boxes and then it was time to attach the drawer faces. For this, I just used some setup blocks and playing cards to get all my reveals correct and a little double-sided tape to hold the drawer face in place until I could secure it from the inside. With the drawer faces on, it was time for my favorite part, which was installing those handmade wooden drawer poles from the beginning of the video. And pretty soon we had one side completely done and we just had to do the exact same thing to the other side. And as you can see, those drawer poles go in the opposite direction because we planned it that way. And just like that, in only two weeks and very little help from Craig, if I'm being honest, he had a desk. Well, she's done. Took a while, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You learned something. There's just one thing left to do. Let's go and get Craig and bring him up here and show him the final project outcome thing. So I went and got Craig, put a blindfold on him, and I was excited to reveal his desk to him. I mean, I had spent a lot of time on this. It was a labor of love. So I brought him in. Okay, take the blindfold off. Dude, I, I watched you build this whole thing. In fact, I actually sanded a lot of it. I did a lot of it, too. I mean, it's great. Whatever. I I you literally, you ruin everything, man. <sighs> okay. What's that? This is your uniform. Uniform? We yeah. have uniforms. Well, now that you have a desk, I just figured, you know, this is gonna go with that. So give you a second to get changed. Jason. Jason, I'm not your receptionist. I'm not gonna answer this. Jason. Urban Moth Woodworking, this is Craig. 